I can't believe personally I let a show that ticks off so many boxes for me pass by for this long. If you have not heard about or seen anything about this show, hopefully this video gives you that look into it to spark some interest. A goal of mine throughout this year is to go to a lot of shows that are considered more recent or even still running like Craig of the Creek and give them a shot. Essentially stay up to date sometimes and appreciate where this medium of storytelling is at currently. Craig of the Creek has been on Cartoon Network for the past handful of years, with four seasons under its belt and renewed for a fifth season coming later this year. So let's take a look at why this show has just captured my attention and just maybe why it should capture yours. And totally not because I was bullied into it. Cute story and all, but who cares? Now a word from our sponsor. Thank you to Surfshark VPN for sponsoring today's video. Surfshark VPN is a virtual private network that helps you secure your digital life in turn helping your real life by putting your worries at ease. Surfshark offers one of the best full coverage VPN packages out there with an unlimited number of devices that can all run under one subscription, all at the same time. Seriously, as many devices as you want. The Surfshark app itself is available on all platforms, PC, Mac, and of course the Linux users out there, you're covered as well. Even smart TVs and video game companies consoles, all along with 24-7 live customer support and a full 30-day money-back guarantee to make sure you know it's completely risk-free by giving them a shot, as well as one of the best security measures with their strictly no-logs policy which encrypts your data, meaning that they do not keep any of it, nor does anyone know what you're doing online. Want to watch something that isn't streaming in your country? And <laughs> No worries, just connect to any of the servers Surfshark has around the world and boom, you can access streaming libraries of even more content that otherwise would not be available in your country. It's fast and it's easy to use, filled with features that go beyond just the basics with a regular VPN. If you want to protect yourself online while browsing, as well as help support the channel, you can get Surfshark VPN at surfshark.deal slash jordanfringe, and enter promo code jordanfringe for 83% off in an extra three months for free. So click the link down below in the description and get protected today. All right, have a good one. So why did this show specifically jump out to me over anything else at the moment to take a look at first? Well, a couple of reasons. First, being the look of the show, show itself and understanding what this show is about. The show follows Craig Williams, a kid living his day-to-day -day life hanging out with his friends in a fictionalized suburban Maryland-based town called Herkelton. A lot of my favorite cartoons growing up and a lot from Cartoon Network pull a lot from personal memories that I can relate to. It's something we've discussed a lot here on the channel. But whether a little or a lot, just an ounce of something familiar can attach me pretty heavily. For me, the biggest thing is that for 90% of my life, I've lived in in Maryland. From my childhood to my adulthood, Maryland has been home for me. And while the show has a lot of its inspiration from the DC metro area in Baltimore, it definitely focuses on the suburban areas in between. I live close enough and have visited these specific areas frequently in my life that a sense of familiarity kicked in literally immediately. The next major thing really relates to what the show is about, and that is the imaginative wonder Craig, Kelsey, and JP have for their adventures in their local Creek hangout spot, where in which they play into a fantasy-esque kingdom, where all of the kids that would hang out at the Creek essentially would be part of different tribes of friend groups, with tree forts and all. Your typical episode of the show would follow our main three, known together as the Stump Kids, as they embark on adventures within the Creek to either become legends of the Creek, like so many other have with their own legendary stories or all-around fun games that you'd play as a kid, as well as plenty of other fun tales personal or incorporating everyone. These adventures would also parody tropes from all sorts of media that play well against the playful imagination one would have growing up. Whatever the setup for the episode would be, it kept the spirit of these vital moments in childlike wonder alive. Growing up in Maryland, myself and other friends in the neighborhood around the ages of 8 to 11 years old, much like the characters in the show, had an area near the neighborhood neighborhood that was a secluded little forest that had a creek running through it. It served as a path to kind of help you find your way in and out. And towards the middle of the woods, where a handful of trees would be knocked down from storms and some semblance of others who put things up, was stuff like a tire swing or even a lookout post that was something like 10 feet high. And as a kid, 10 feet is high, okay? And the show really made me remember a lot of this. While the adventures or whatever we got up to would be obviously different from the show, it brought me back to a time where my own 
only worry was if my friends could hang out that day. At this point in my life as an adult, I'm really starting to fondly recall and reminisce on those days. And this show almost feels like a vessel to relive those good times. Heck, a lot of, if not all of, this channel is dedicated to all the things from past to present in animation that have meant a lot to me and sometimes exploring how they affected me when they originally came out. Oddly enough, the show gave me this mixed feeling of Hey Arnold, my favorite show of all time, and The Rugrats, fusing the real life everyday feel of people you know like Hey Arnold with these imaginative adventures that harken the feelings of the adventures the Rugrats went on. The kids themselves in the show have their own distinct personalities, from the direct main trio to all of the extended tribes of kids shown in the show. Heck, I can even feel a Codename Kids Next Door vibe to an extent. It really plays into the role-playing aspect in a Dungeons and Dragons way, where the kids have their own roles to play within their tribes at the creek. From a place to purchase or rather trade various things for items needed on adventures, to even different tribes handing out quests for our main trio to go on. Even Craig in his home life can view things as missions or obstacles to overcome. Like for example him trying to get out of a family dinner to go out and play with his friends. He would pretend that he's scanning the room and trying to figure out how to navigate everything thrown in his way. It's all very unique and something that made me fall more in love with the show itself. So let's look further into these characters that help make the show so special. Narrating seems a lot more dramatic today. Next, it's Craig of the Creek. Craig himself is the leader of the main three in the show, focusing on the exploration of the creek itself and cataloging the setting by mapping out the creek. Similar to my comparisons of Hey Arnold and the Rugrats, he carries a lot of the mentality that Arnold and Tommy had, which is empathy and compassion for others, often helping others out. His full getup consists of his trusty satchel and his staff, which he made himself. He is voiced by Philip Solomon. Kelsey, voiced by Noelle Wells, is more of the warrior of the group, being more of the let me handle this type as she sees herself as the hero of the story. Included in this is her own internal hero-esque monologue and of course her trusty sword. It's made of PVC though, so she's not going all berserk on all the others. She also has a pet bird, which she calls a falcon even though it clearly isn't. Its name is Mortimer and I love this little bird. JP is the comic relief of the group, often being not the smartest of the three, but a kind kid who loves to go on these adventures with his friends and use his imagination. He has an oversized jersey that he wears and it gets dirty quite often. He is voiced by H. Michael Croner. Surrounding our main characters is both an assortment of interesting, varying in age kids who inhabit the creek and mainly Craig's family. From his younger sister who likes to act older than she is and is very particular in how neatly she keeps her life, voiced by Lucia Cunningham, to his older brother, played by Phil Lamar, who is the smart know-it-all type mostly spending his time on screen with his brother, demeaning his childlike wonder and intelligence. His father, played by Terry Crews, is a caring family man, who, much like Terry Crews, has a focus on fitness. And of course, his mom, played by Kimberly Gregory. She is caring and she is able to really understand her children and break down the necessary walls to properly communicate with them. In most cases, giving advice and perspective that my own mother has given to me. It's a sweet and realistic family dynamic that the show layers on extra and is greatly appreciated. The other kids of the creek bring memories of kids that I grew up with or just knew in general. Like the elder kids of the creek who are a bit nerdier and represent people I've played World of Warcraft with and other games when I was back in high school. Is that an Evangelion reference? The sewer tribe is pretty cool. In my neighborhood in my early teen years there was a large sewer system that had like two or three major walk-in openings and of course as kids do we explored them plenty, so I thought this aspect of the show when brought up was pretty cool. The alliance of science kids, the tea timers, the list of cool and different groups of kids fleshes out and freshens up each journey that we go on. There's a nice level of time crafted into most every character, diving into who they are, their backgrounds, and their interests. Even adding in Omar as an honorary fourth member to the Stump Kids later on, where his whole backstory and characteristics are defined pretty well and in some cool ways. Coming from Matt Matt Burnett and Ben Levin, who had previously worked together on multiple projects, with the most notable being both of them working as writers on Steven Universe, another show I am keen to cover here on the channel at some point. One thing that I always love to see, especially throughout the history of Cartoon Network, are people who you can trace back to working on other shows, getting the chance to create their own show or work on other shows in new positions. For example, the first one I can think of on the spot is JG Quintel. On just Cartoon Network alone, he went from writing on Camp 
Laszlo, to story writing on the marvelous misadventures of Flapjack, to creating regular show, and now another show that's under Cartoon Network Studios, but for an older audience on HBO Max, close enough. And in between all this, he's doing voice work and other writing for other shows, but he had the time to define his voice within his writing and was able to create works of his own that are now loved. So with Craig of the Creek, this is an incredible outing from both Matt and Ben, who I think, with this show and beyond for what they do next, have my attention. I am excited based on what I've seen and enjoyed. I'm very much of the mindset where aside from just appreciating the art, I appreciate the artists and want to see what they create next and look back on what they've already created. That's how I've discovered some of my favorite film directors, some of my favorite manga writers and artists, and of course, musicians. Well, that's my story. Guess I better get going. Coming up next, it's Craig of the Creek. Speaking of musicians, the rapper Del the Funky Homo Sapien, if you aren't familiar with rap music, he was a part of the gorilla song Clint Eastwood in Rock the House, as well as his own great lineage of work, made an appearance in the show in the episode The Kid from 3030, and makes a later appearance in the series to perform a song during season 3's finale. Del actually seems to have found some fun in the voice acting world as he also would go on to make an appearance in Nickelodeon's Middlemost post. Cartoon Network specifically has worked with plenty of artists and rappers for their cartoons over the past decade and I've always loved that. And plus there's lots of ska music in this show, like that's an instant 10 points. Now, like I was saying earlier, why I truly found a connection with the show is how it portrays both childlike wonder and how it finds ways that anyone can find themselves in. Aside from the incredible nostalgic-like references and homage, the show feels like home. Yeah, home. The Maryland setting personally solidifies that for me, but it's also everything else that the show encompasses. Even looking into the suburban neighborhoods outside of the adventures shows a setting that again is so familiar to me, and something I feel I haven't seen represented in a cartoon before, or at least something that I can't immediately recall. Stuff like townhouses being shown and being something that I grew up in at one point, capturing exactly what my own experience was as a kid. I know others have to appreciate stuff like this as well because I certainly appreciate details like this. In fact, the show is full of moments big and small that I think everyone can find themselves in and appreciate, being able to resonate with so many things, moments, and characters. As much as I stay in the past and reminisce on so many of my childhood shows that made me, it is really refreshing and eye-opening that I do need to give newer shows like this more of a chance, thinking that I've outgrown the new stuff out there when that could not be further from the truth. And that's why I love the animation medium. It can speak to all ages from the stories being told to the depths of jokes, situations, and characters. Craig of the Creek is now something that has opened a new door for me personally, and it's something that I hope to bring more of on the channel going forward. So I already owe a lot to this show, and my time with it has been more than well worth it. There's even an episode about Craig and his father playing video games together. Is that an OKKO OK reference? And their rivalry about their son surpassing him in a game really harkens back to playing games with my dad. I remember personally playing this kickboxing game on the PlayStation 1 and how we'd go back and forth for hours every week kicking each other's butts. This show really pulled those feelings back out to the forefront of my mind. Now, since we're on the topic of video games, while there are some Cartoon Network website games for this show, based on the nature of the show, I think a full-on RPG in the style of the South Park RPG games would actually be pretty awesome. I know that's a crazy, unrealistic ask from me, but I'm just saying, I'd buy the heck out of that. A show like Craig of the Creek hits me as an adult with nostalgia to a certain time in my life, but to those growing up with the show right now, it may be affecting them in many different ways. And to just know that there is that duality, multiple ways that a piece of media can both relate to and be interpreted differently is both beautiful and brilliant. In the span of a month, I went from only knowing the show by name to completely being entranced in what it has to offer. I am very excited for season five of the show and wish it nothing but the best going forward for a nice and long run on Cartoon Network. As we grow up and days hanging out with your friends seem like a distant place in time, it's nice to take a second to cherish those moments through the mediums that take you back to them. Is this whole episode a Pokemon reference? Who's that 
I love this show. If you never gave the show a chance or heard much about it, I'd highly recommend it. I knew I was in for something interesting, but I didn't know that I would end up finding more than a show that I absolutely love, but also see myself in so greatly. If you have seen Craig of the Creek, please let me know your thoughts on the show in the comments. Thanks so much for watching. I truly appreciate it. Make sure to hit the like button and subscribe for more content like this. Follow me on Twitter, and I'll be back with another video soon, but until then, Later.